I request Dr. K. Kasturi Rangan, Chairman, National Education Policy Committee, former Chairman ISRO, to deliver the inaugural address. Professor M. K. Sridhar, President of SES, a member of the National Education Policy Committee, a critical member, I should say, and my long-term colleague, but I should say it is with his assistance we started the Knowledge Commission of Karnataka earlier. And whatever we are able to do over the years, I think it's more than a decade now since it has been in existence, quite a lot of it, a lot of it goes to his initiative, his vision, and his dynamism, and it, which is reflected and which is sustaining today this Knowledge Commission. And of course, he is in, involved in many other areas. So I would like to really congratulate Sridhar for organizing this meet, which is both timely and appropriate. <laughs> Professor D.P. Singh, I came to know of him not recently, for many years in the academic circles. He was one of the very active members, and he continues to be an active member. He extended the hospitality of his NAC when he was the director here in starting this entire process of the policy making. And the initial meetings were all held under his supervision. Uh, very productive and very memorable for us to have started this program in NAC. And of course, he was not purely a facilitator of meetings, but he was much more than that, a good academic who gave us some very vital input into the policy making. And I'm very happy that here he, here he is delivering the keynote address. You could not have found a better person. And uh, thank you, Dr. D.B. Singh, that I could see you today uh, on this important occasion. Professor Farkhan Omkomar certainly is another of those dynamic person uh, who is promoting the higher education in this country. He is, of course, the Secretary General of the Association of Indian Universities. I met him in Delhi as a part of the consultation of this uh, policy. And I was very impressed with the de depth and the breadth of his knowledge in the context of the higher education in this country and what we really need to do. And it is good that he is most appropriate that he is here in the inaugural session and also participating in the discussions. Professor Dr. A.S. Kori, of course, I know him as a part of the Karnataka State Higher Education Council with, with uh, Professor Ranganath and Professor Kori. We have been working and, in fact, we have a Karnataka a policy on education, uh, which has come out thanks to the support that we got both from Professor Corey and Professor Ranganath. And uh, so it's nice that with that kind of a background, he's here. I also saw the dynamic director of SES, uh, Manasa Nagabhushanam. And uh, it's very nice to see her giving an account of how this particular institution is growing. I am sure it has a great future. And I'm sure it will contribute much to the originality out-of-box thinking about education because policy is only a beginning and we have a long way to go. Also, I'd like to recognize the very distinguished invitees here. Professor Ramachandran is here, who has been played a very key role. Uh, then you have the Vice Chancellor of the Bangalore University. And uh, of course, we have the NAC director, the new director here, Professor Sharma, and many others. I'm sure that uh, I can go on talking about it. And also, I'm so happy to see a lot of youngsters here as a part of this discussion, because ultimately the future of education rests with them. At the outset, uh, let me thank the organizers, and particularly Professor Sridhar and others for this privilege extended to me to be a part of the inaugural session of the National Seminar on Rejuvenation of Undergraduate Education in India. Right now, as a first spin-off, I got rejuvenated in seeing all of you in this very important gathering here. It is most appropriate and timely to bring this very important component of the higher education into a national focus by debating the multiplicity of issues that plague the undergraduate education in our country. The step taken by SES is truly a far-sighted one considering that the country is getting geared to adopt a new education policy as announced by the present government. The fast-changing scenario in the country's socio-economic development has brought in a sense of urgency to examine the different aspects of the country's education as well as research. I also see the importance of this meeting 
in the context of several professionals, in a sense, who is who in the educational firmament of this country, and whose inputs in this meeting is sure to provide fresh insights into the issues to be dealt with in rejuvenating the undergraduate education. To get a feel of the scale of the undergraduate education, as per the All India Survey of Higher Education, this is one of the authority reports that we have, 2016, 2017, I think the 18 has also come out now, as I am sure that this is a good enough indicator. As of now, the higher education is imparted through 864 universities, about 40,000 colleges, with an overall student strength of something like 35.7 million. With a gross enrollment ratio of about 25.2% in higher education, the undergraduate education constitute nearly 84% in higher education, 84% of the same. Further, the present undergraduate level has nearly 38% in arts, humanities, and social sciences uh, courses, and about 31% in science and commerce. In other words, a major chunk of in students, that is about 70%, are pursuing courses like BA, BSc, and BCom. This present status clearly highlights that an overhaul of higher education must start at the undergraduate education in general, and in particular, undergraduate courses offered by colleges affiliated to the state public universities. Of course, one should also keep in mind, in fact, uh, Professor Ramachandran was one of the key person in saying that we should reach a gross enrollment ratio in higher education of 50%. And that can make all the difference. And in fact, the present discussion, I am sure, will also address the question that what happens when you try to move towards a 50% gross enrollment level in the context of the undergraduate education, the numbers and the quality and all the rest of it. The role of undergraduate education as a critical element in the overall educational stream has to be understood in the context of it being stepping stone towards developing professional competence, at the same time developing the ability to cope with new and emerging knowledge demands. With the present GDP of two plus trillion economy, India is already placed at sixth as the sixth major economic power. By 2030, the country is likely to reach 10 trillion economy in nominal GDP terms, thereby placing it at the third largest economy in the world. An 8% growth GDP is what is expected, and this is not very difficult for this country to realize in the coming years, and therefore to become a third largest economy next only to United States and China is certainly realistic to assume in our planning for the future. Initially, realization of such an economic strength that is moving towards a 2%, the fifth largest, and then finally third largest, moving towards that, managing it, sustaining it, and growing it to even higher levels would call for an extraordinary human enterprise, the like of which I think I have ne we have never felt in the past. This, coupled with the continuous and fast-changing knowledge domain, through developments in science and technology and other related factors, makes it imperative for us to examine the adequacy of the present models of education and research. With nearly 70% of the higher education being in the domain of the undergraduate studies, even if we exclude engineering and technology, which constitutes about 14%, the need for a major transformation to this segment of education hardly needs any further emphasis. At the present juncture, India's higher education system faces a number of challenges in meeting the need to build expertise that the society needs in the 21st century, in the next 22 to three decades. In particular, such a goal will need to address the contemporary and the future workplace demands such as flexibility and focusing on generic 21st century competencies that are critical all across the all kinds of work. Further, the education should be such that the future workers could also be enterprising, enterprising innovators. On the whole, the education system, besides creating greater opportunities for employment, should also be key to more cohesive and cooperative communities and a more enlightened, cultured, and prosperous nation. On the specific aspects of higher education, 
Some of the critical challenges include fragmentation of the higher education institutions, lack of teacher and the institutional autonomy, as well as the inadequate mechanisms for attaining outstanding institutional leaderships and performance management. Of course, this will obviously call for examining the institutional structures, including the need for restructuring and consolidation, the questions like bringing together the multiplicity of, of educational institution in a particular area to provide an optimality with regard to the imparting the education in a variety of fields is the type of examples that one has to consider. It has been considered earlier and it needs to be considered and the need of the hour. I'm sure that many of the questions related to the various aspects of the undergraduate education and rejuvenation will be discussed at length in this seminar. Among the various themes proposed to be taken up in this seminar, I see the inclusion of the course structure, curriculum development and assessment, pedagogical practices and innovations, skill development and employability, as well as governance, institutional management and leadership, all critical to develop the appropriate strategies. At this juncture, I would like to touch upon a few specific points which certainly needs attention from this erudite and informed audience. The first item I would like to touch upon is the importance of liberal education. Liberal education differs fundamentally from the professional education or vocational training, as its teachings are more general and less obviously useful. Liberal education cultivates the intellect and expands the capacity to reason and empathize. To foster these qualities, the content of a curriculum is a critical factor. Science and mathematics are an essential component of such a project because they present to the students a method of inquiry that are indispensable to the full development and its powers to reason independently. On the other side, the great works of philosophy provide examples of how the mind liberates itself from prejudices and by the rigorous application of reason to question as to how we know and how we should act. Now the question one can ask is how relevant are these considerations to prepare results for this new millennium? The future is highly unpredictable, there is no doubt about this. The process of undergraduate education with particular emphasis on liberal education would lead to a student to, to learn how to learn, how to acquire information, and thus how to develop skills. So you are not really straight-jacketed into one area, one skill, one vocation, and things like that. But you are prepared to meet the new and emerging ideas of knowledge, convert them into skill, that ability to develop that kind of a thing. Uh, that's what I mean by learn how to learn, how to acquire information, and thus how to develop the skills. Next point I would like to talk about is the fundamental research. I bring in a fundamental research in the undergraduate education for a very different reason. A level of investment in the basic science is an investment for the future. Universities, rather than the government laboratories, non-teaching research institutes, or private industries, are the primary institutions in which government-funded research are undertaken. The success of scientific research in a university system, which provides virtual free market of ideas, is unlikely to be duplicated in this country, so we need to bring this in. Initiation of research as a matter, matter of culture in the university system is critical and to some extent it should also be, the flavor should be felt also at the undergraduate level. But an equally important and probably another important dimension for a de deliberate decision to locate most fundamental research in universities rather than government laboratories and private research, certainly they will have their share is that it enables the best new next generation of scientists and engineers to receive education and training from the nation's best scientists and engineers. That means the research, the scientists who conduct research and the students who learn from those scientists, they form an axis to create an overall quality which is unprecedented currently seen in the university and particularly in the undergraduate education. You can see this now being initiated at the Indian Institute of Science right across our neighbor, where the undergraduate education today is a part of an overall postgraduate education and research. 
and the professors who do the postgraduate education and research, they are the ones who teach the undergraduate students. An extraordinary opportunity for these undergraduates to get exposed to some of the best minds in the country. And of course, at the same time, they are also now going into the liberal arts, the liberal education part of it, and seeing how that can be integrated to create an overall enrichment of the undergraduate education. So these experiments are already in progress, not only in the Institute of Science, but in several institutions in this country. But in our case, I think this needs to be taken in the broader and a larger context of the type of number of university that we are talking 800 or 850 plus, as well as 40,000 colleges. So we have a large ground to cover in the coming years before the impact of this kind of educational system, a restructured educational system, a renewed vigor into the undergraduate education will be felt across the country. So what are the important things that at this particular point I would like to summarize? One is, of course, one should look at the restructuring of the liberal, educa of the liberal education. It could be a four-year, it could be a three-year, it could be a two-year, one-year. There will be a component of what you may call as a liberal education. There can be a component of a specialization in arts. There's a specialization component. And so you can turn out by suitable permutation and combination of this kind of a thing. Exit points also within the undergraduate education, it is not necessary that you need to wait for three years to get a BSc degree or a BA degree. Uh, you can have an exit so that it provides enough flexibility for the youngsters to learn up to a point where they want to and get into a profession. It could be the first year, it could be a second year, it could be a third year. It, so that kind of a flexibility needs to be built up into the undergraduate education. You need to bring in the liberal arts into the undergraduate education. You need to create a certain broader picture of developing the capability for decision making and looking at new areas. At the same time, you are prepared to immediately fulfill the task of having a professional. So these are all the elements that need to be brought together. And that's going to be a challenge. Certainly, the pedagogy doesn't exist for this kind of an approach for undergraduate education. But I think I'm sure that you'll do that. The other point I'd like to say is this should not be the exclusive uh, preserve of a few universities in this country. It should not be IIT, Karakpur, uh, IISC, Bangalore should be the place. You need to bring in this kind of a concept for undergraduate education among all the universities to offer liberal arts in the undergraduate program. Second, third thing, we need to probably set up higher educational institutions in many parts of the country. In fact, uh, Sridhar, that day we were discussing whether should we not have it in all districts. So that kind of a thing, I think this is very sensible to think of that kind of a thing. And therefore, we need to also focus on la language, arts, sports, and music. These are all integration of that. Importance of, now I want to say something about the importance, something which is not normally thought about. Is there some connection between the undergraduate education and the school education? Ultimately, it is the school education outcome that really feeds to the undergraduate education. To assume that the undergraduate education is an isolated uh, standalone system is not appropriate. You need to look at the issues of a school education that could rejuvenate the undergraduate education. So you need to really look at it. So uh, any kind of a discussion here should also to some extent see what kind of changes and what kind of new approaches we need to bring uh, to the school education that can strengthen the outcome from the school education and therefore can further strengthen the undergraduate education because at the student level as well as the teacher level, these are important. There's also one more thing to that which is totally overlooked in the earlier years and that is related to the preschool education. Now it's becoming very clear, in fact, there was a recent article in the Times of India about uh, the importance of the preschool education. The preschool education really creates the youngsters whose deficiencies which we perceive today as something very natural you can be overcome with proper strategies, the question of the brain growth, the evolution of the brain growth, and how do we try to reflect it into a preschool curriculum and also the early part of the educational curriculum. These are questions that need to be addressed. Even though they are not directly relevant to the undergraduate education, what I want to say is you want to make sure that you have a very strong undergraduate education. You need to have the brightest of the students, and brightest doesn't mean 
that uh, you have the rest of them not useful, but you need to make sure that as much as possible, these inequalities are corrected. And this can be corrected because there are scientific basis for correcting them. It is not just the wish of any one of us. So there are scientific basis for it. So you correct it in the preschool education, considerably improve the outcome into the school education. The school education, you structure it in such a way that you get best of the students in the undergraduate in a much larger number. And uh, Ramachandran's uh, uh, dream of a 50% becomes much easier to realize in this country with that kind of an approach. So connecting school education uh, with and preschool education with undergraduate education cannot be totally overlooked. On the other side, you need very good undergraduate program if you want to do research. The research is, the country certainly is, has plans to do in a big way to enter into the research area. And university system, as I said, is the best place. You do peer research in university for many reasons. As I said, it really gives you an ability for the teachers and the professors who do research to teach the younger generation. So that is the, one of the be most important thing. Also, the important thing is you do pure research. Much of the pure research should be done in the universities, simply because the university provides, after all, government funding, a high-risk environment, which is typical of a pure research, certainly can be tolerated because they nevertheless create a certain strong knowledge base for the country. And out of this knowledge base is the one that we try to pick up the areas for applied sciences, translational research, and finally into the industrial and other kinds of research. So you need to have a strong undergraduate education in the context of promoting many of them into the postgraduate education, where a strong research base can be created only through a strong undergraduate education. So with these kind of words, we see that undergraduate education, in a sense, is a bridge between the early education through schooling, as well as the late educa education and research. And unless we have an integrated approach to doing this and make sure that the critical area of an undergraduate education becomes very, very crucial in connecting these, you cannot have a comprehensive educational policy. So I hope that the present government, which is seriously looking at these kind of approaches for doing this, will certainly find the thoughts that will emerge from these discussions here as extremely useful for them to plan and execute in the coming years, and not in the next five years or 10 years. It could be even 30 or 50 years. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, that was a packaged uh, um, takeaway for all of us on the undergraduate education. So what is in store and the larger ground which is available for all of us to play, like as to what needs to be done in the undergraduate education space. Thank you so much, sir.